Sunday, the service was so good. I know we were just coming here every once in a while. But that once in a while Sunday we came. That's when people had them poster boards. <laughs> you know, showing I used to do this. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. was me. You remember that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that was sweet. Mm -hmm. I mean to tell you, I listened. I slumped as a bottle of weeds <laughs> as a kid. But Jesus came hey. by. Hey. 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 Could most kids that come from a, a drink at home end up drinking too? That's right. Not me. Amen. Praise be to God. Not me. Thank God. God got a hold of me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I if God can get a hold of me, he can get a hold of you. Amen. 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 I want you tonight, if you feel like talking, praising the Lord, testifying, you ought to do it. Yeah. You ought, somebody needs to hear it tonight. Yeah. You ought to do it. Amen. Don't just be talking to be talking. But to brag on the same. It would be wonderful if you would. Amen. I'll give you about three seconds. Amen. <laughs> I'd like to say something wonderful happened to me because he touched me and made me whole. Thank God he saved my soul. And one day I went to heaven. I was talking to Natalie one day who was coming home. And I said, Natalie, there was a song on the radio about heaven. And, you know, I, my heart was just beating with, with joy. And I, I told Natalie, I said, Natalie, you don't understand this feeling. When you get my age, you got way more over there than you have here. And the, that song, I think we sang this morning, the earthly things don't matter. It's all about you. I was thinking the same thing. Amen. Amen.
mean this in the good way, and you probably don't know who I'm talking about. But he does sound like alfalfa. <laughs> but he, he, he puts it out there, yeah. If you get your hair to stick up in the back like that. Now I said, does your hair stick up in the back? Yeah. Come here and sing for us. She said, if I'm going to sing, I'm going to sing early because I run out of hair. No, she said she's nervous. And we talked about this. I told her what's happening. And my number has an 803 area code. I think my father just did. She wouldn't answer. She thought I was, I was, what do you call them? Telemarker. But I worked. And that magical voice, I said, this here is Mike Boone from Emmanuel Baptist. Hello, I didn't know who that was. <laughs> but I said, would you please sing? And she said, I get so nervous. And I said, I do not know what you get. Who doesn't like to hear this lady sing? Right. Not a soul. I love to hear you sing. Amen. First time I ever saw you sing, I said, ain't not much wind going to come out of that little bitty spin. But she took that mic and she scolded that song. I said, that's my kind of thing. Amen. Hey, bless her. sang it for him a whole lot. He would just sing the, the calming down when he would get so, so anxious. I miss him. I miss him every day. And people say, well, how you, how you doing? I say, well, I'm trying to live without a heart. Because Jimmy took mine. And I'm hoping God's putting it back piece by piece. And Bless your Lord. Struggling, but God's going to see it. I really hate to bother you, but Lord, I got a whole lot on my mind. I know that you're real busy, but I promise I won't take much of your time. But I need a little grace yeah. to help me make it through. Lord, I need to feel that kind of love yeah. that only comes yeah. from you. Yeah. Yeah. If you just squeeze my hand, let me feel you by myself. You said you'd never, never leave me. Amen. You'd always be my guide. But the storms of life sometimes won't let the sun shine through. Lord, I need to feel that kind of love, love that only comes from you. Child, I heard a preacher say that you were a sinner's friend. I remember when I came to you with a heart, a heart so black with sin. But on the night you turned my life around, it seemed you made me over new. The mercy that you showed me, Lord, kept me coming back to you. Amen. If you just squeeze my hand, let me feel you by my side. Amen. You said you'd never let me come. You'd always be yes. my guide. But the storms of life sometimes won't let the sun shine through. Lord, I need to feel that kind of love Amen. that only comes from you. Appreciate that, Miss Dodsey. 
And uh, by the way, we're going to, Miss Dodge's going to fix and take a trip. She's going to Florida for a month or two. And uh, we'll, certainly, we'll certainly miss her. And unless she gets homesick and comes back early. <laughs> but she's uh, going down to spend a little time with her sister. And uh, so uh, we'll miss her. She'll be leaving Thursday. Is this the first time you've ever flown? Yes. I've been my wife. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go, well, you can always drive back, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, they say the worst part is taking off and the next worst part is landing. <laughs> but anyway, I'm like Miss Dodge. Sometimes I think about it when you get no one of them things. Of course, I realize and I know they say, well, there's more ag car accidents than there are. You know, plane crashes and stuff like that, but they hold a lot more cars on the road, too. The only thing about a plane, plane that has trouble, you're in trouble, sure enough, amen. But uh, we'll miss Miss Dyson. You pray for her. She'll be here Wednesday night, I guess, and then uh, she'll be leaving on Thursday, so you pray for her, pray she'll have a good time. And she'll enjoy herself down there with her sister, and uh, her stay of, she'll enjoy it, but she'll come back soon and be back with us, okay? Uh, I got a phone call a while ago from my cousin, my, uh, Dean Bryant, my my cousin, Gail, fell today uh, at church getting in the truck. And, What's your uh, truck doing in the church? Huh? What's your truck doing in the church? Yeah. Well, while she was at church. <laughs> and she fell, and they think she may have broke her femur. Oh. And uh, so she's in the hospital, and he called and asked if we pray for her. Uh, said she's in a lot of pain. And so you pray for Gail Bryant. And then, of course, Brian, I think, is having surgery. They went and done the surgery today on him with that infection in his knee. I don't know what type of procedure that was. It could have been just a going in and cleaning out or something. I'm not exactly sure. But pray for Brian McCarter and then pray for Frankie. She, uh, uh, Jack says she's so-so, whatever so-so is. But uh, pray for her and pray for her back and legs get all right. And she'll be able to be back with us on uh, Wednesday night. And then, of course, continue to pray for Miss Laney and keep her in your prayers and pray for her. And um, the family's requested that, you know, at this time, because of her immune system being so low, that uh, just limit the visits to her family. And as I said this morning, I think she says she's in room 8411. If you want to drop her a card, you can do that. I wouldn't even try to call because she probably can't reach the phone and she can't talk loud anyway. And uh, this is the third week that she's uh, been in the hospital, so she's going to need to gain a lot of strength back. And uh, so be sure to pray for Miss Laney and pray she won't have any further setbacks. And also pray for her husband, Junior. Pray God will speak to his heart through this and other members of the family. God knows what needs to be done. And God has a plan and a purpose for everything that happens. We don't understand it, and sometimes we question God. We say, why? And God has all the answers to all the problems and all the questions that we have. But sometimes he chooses not to answer why. He, sometimes, and I, even our prayer requests, he don't answer our prayer requests the way that we pray, but he answers the prayer requests in a way in which he will get all the glory and that he will get all the praise. And certainly that's what we should want. So let's just pray that the Lord's will be done. I can't think of anybody else that I missed. Uh, I, do, I would like to mention um, Brother Furman Nichols, Brother Furman and Becky Nichols' uh, grandson uh, that's going in the military. He was here this morning, and I thought he was Hunter. I know Brother uh, uh, Furman told me he was coming and uh, was supposed to come. And uh, he said, I want us to call him up and have prayer with him uh, before he leaves. He leaves in the morning, go to Fort Benning to begin his basic training. And I thought it was Hunter that came in. In fact, when he came in, I called him Hunter. And, um, but it was Andrew, and I failed to have him to come up. I'd already planned to maybe have the, the Army flag put up out here. One of the little soldier boys, and we was going to have prayer for him, but it just totally slipped my mind. And I hated that so bad, so we had prayer with him outside the church there, right there at the door, before he left. But I hated it so bad that I missed that, and, wasn't, and we didn't recognize him. But I appreciate our young man. I appreciate anybody uh, that serves our country. And uh, let's pray for Andrew. Let's pray for his safety. Let's pray the Lord to watch over him and take care of him, build a hedge about him and take care of him while he's there in his training and he continues in the, in the service there with the Army and, and even if he gets on places of danger, God will protect him and build a hedge around him. And pray for the family as he leaves. I know 
They're excited probably about him going into the military, but then on the other hand, they hate to see him go and be separated from him. So you pray for Andrew. Lord, just bless him. Be with him, okay? All right. Uh, let's pray for each other. We all need prayer. Pray for our church. Pray for our church family. And pray the Lord's will be done. Let's have the ushers to come forward. And we'll receive the evening's offering this, this evening. Don't forget while they're coming, I'll make mention of the uh, Piedmont uh, Baptist Fellowship tomorrow. We'll be leaving the church here at 1.30, for any of the, I mean uh, 12.30, for any of those of you that would like to go with us. So come if you can. And um, we'll leave in the van about 12.30 and head over to Greer and enjoy a good fellowship and good preaching. Have a good time and some good fellowship with those men of God. Looking forward to it. And I hope you can go, men, those of you that have been going. So let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing to be upon the gift and the giver. Brother Dennis Bishop, if you'd pray for us, please. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and privilege we have to serve you and to live for you. Yes. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. Granted our Father. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you, brother. You glad burdens are lifted at Calvary. Thank God for the day that the burden of sin was removed off our life. We came to Calvary. Ask God to come into our heart and save us. Oh, what a difference when Jesus passed by. Praise the Lord. Thank God for Calvary and the burdens that are lifted there. Amen. Brother, uh, Brother Mike said he had a, I want to share his testimony tonight, Brother, Brother Mikey. E. And uh, so he's going to come at this time. And while he's coming, don't forget, Destiny's having surgery in the morning also uh, at um, 8 o'clock, I believe. Is that going to be at Pelham or Pelham. over at Pelham it's, uh, Medical Center? So be sure to pray for Destiny, pray everything will go well, and uh, she'll be real good when she comes out. Amen. All right, Brother Mike. He reminded me, he said, when we had that service where they had people standing up and said, I did this, I done that, this is where God brought me from. I, on this date, 2009, God made it very real in my heart. It was actually a Monday morning, about 2.45 in the morning. I was driving tractor and trailer uh, towards uh, Spruce Pine, North Carolina. And I had been just... I've been raised in church my whole life. I mean, when have you ever heard a term, you broke your teeth on the backs of pews and stuff like that? That's true. And I have uh, been raised in church my whole life. I believed in church, believed in the Jesus my whole life. But it, 
never, not one point up till about 31 year old, I never accepted him as my, as my personal savior in, in Christ. And he started working with me and dealing with me. And, and believe it or not, I started losing meals. I started losing sleep and he started dealing with me, dealing with me, dealing with me. And then one day, like I say, you've heard it before. I was driving that truck and he climbed in the side of that, that Volvo 1300 class business class tractor and trailer and he got in there with me and he, he said, son, if you died, where are you going to go? And I believe if you raise your children in the way they should go, Amen. they won't depart from it. I didn't have a pulpit. I didn't have somebody lead me to the Christ. All I had was what my parents have showed me and taught me. And he made it very real in my life. Amen. And I've said it before, it was somewhere around my marker five because I got to Spruce Pine and I don't remember how in the world I got to Spruce Pine. I don't know who I run over. I don't know who I put in the ditch. I don't remember. But I remember a girl, I knocked on that door and she opened the door at a Walmart in Spruce Pine, North Carolina. And she said, Micah, how are you doing today? And I unloaded on her both barrels. She almost shut the door on me. God made it true and real in our lives. Now, Destiny's going to go have some surgery. And I, the same God that I serve is the same God that will take care of her. I have no qualms or issues or nothing about it. But when it's your child, you think things differently. But I, I just wanted to say, this is my technically nine-year birthday because of today. I want to be an example. I want people to go, if God can save him, he can save me. And, for, and, I, and like I said, I love the Lord, and I love what he's done with his church, but I just appreciate his church. I want to give my testimony. I want to be a good example because that's, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. That's all I want to say, preacher. Amen. I appreciate that. <clears throat> it's a real blessing. And people begins to share with you what the Lord's done for them. And uh, as I said this morning, that encourages me. And... Um, if he's done it for them, he'll do it for us and you and everybody else. And just a joy and a thrill and a privilege uh, tonight to be back in the Lord's house. And this morning as people were going out, uh, they said, you're talking about food so much, I'm about to starve to death. <laughs> and so I look around tonight and a lot of people didn't come. So I figured this morning they must have got a belly full and didn't come back tonight. <laughs> didn't figure they need nothing else, but I got news for you. They need it whether they realize it or not. But I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad the Lord's here. And I'm glad we have the promises of his soon return. And he's going to be receiving us unto himself. So that's such a joy, and that's a thrill, and that's an honor. Boy, this mic's working good now. <laughs> Amen. So thank the Lord. We're going to read once again back over in the book of Amos. Some of you. I just wonder... How many, <clears throat> excuse me, how many this morning, that's the first time you ever turned to the book of Amos? <laughs> Amos chapter 8, if you don't remember where we were. Thank you, Dustin, for that water. Hey, man, that's good stuff. Praise the Lord. I think we'll probably just read. Probably verse number 8 tonight, or verse number 11, I'm sorry, chapter 8 and verse number 11. Appreciate the singing tonight, appreciate the choir, appreciate them singing, appreciate uh, Brother Mike and the work he's doing with the choir, appreciate Miss Linda playing, and um, he, he calls Miss Linda so many names that when <clears throat> Brother Mike said, let her rip, Rosa, Miss Linda started playing, <laughs> and... Uh, He's going to let Miss Rosa testify. So, <laughs> hey, uh, so uh, there again, you don't ever know what's going to happen in the Lord's house. But I'm glad we can have a laugh in the Lord's house. You know, I, feel, I still think church ought to be fun. I think it ought to be fun. I don't think this crowd ought to come over here and have something against this side over here. I don't believe the ones in the middle ought to be against the ones that are sitting on the sides. I think we ought to just come in and have a good time and laugh and rejoice. And, 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 and listen, it's not irreverent to laugh in the Lord's house. We, we use the word rejoice, and that might say, sound more better for concerning the church. 
But every now and then I said, I, a good cry does me good every now and then. But let me just say a good laugh also does me good sometimes. And it's a blessing. Listen, there's some funny things happen in churches. I mean, uh, my, my, the years that I've been in church and the years that some of you have been in church, you probably could share some stories with us that probably would uh, turn our tickle box over of things that have actually happened in the church. And uh, good things and some things that are funny things. There's been, of course, that's sad to say, there's some bad things. I remember years ago at uh, Carolina Baptist, uh, we, uh, we was going to have church and, and, um, on that Sunday morning, uh, man, I mean, th- there was a smell in the church. It was just, you just couldn't hardly stand it. I mean, it was awful. It was terrible. And uh, especially up in the, in the choir section, it was just awful. So that Sunday night, we went back to church. And, man, it was so bad you couldn't hardly stand it. We, in fact, I, I can't remember. I don't think we even had church. What we started doing is tearing out walls to find out where that smell was coming from. And we got tearing out some of the walls and moving some things, and in behind the, 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 the church, the way the church was built, the baptistry was added after the church was built, and it was off to the side of the choir. And, and in between the back wall and the baptistry, inside there, a possum had gotten inside of there, and he had no way of escape. And he lost his life <laughs> in the church. But did it forever stink? It was awful. And Brother Ronnie Allen, being the brave man that he was, and the brave man that he is, he reached in there and got that possum and pulled him out. And as far as I'm concerned, if we ever get one in here, he's welcome to pull him out too. <laughs> But that was sort of not a funny thing, but it was when we look back on it and think about it. Because it was bad. It was bad. And, um, but when you come to church, come to church and plan on having a good time. Amen. Don't come with a chip on your shoulder. Because if you do, somebody's going to knock it off. You can rest assured of that. Get all your differences and all your qualms and all of your ill feelings Take care of them in the parking lot. Amen. Pray on the way to church. Get all those things out of the way. When you come into church, come in smiling. Sometimes people coming into church, I don't know if they're coming in to worship or coming in for a funeral. We ought to be coming in with a smile on our face and enjoying the good things of God because we have to realize if we're coming, <clears throat> he certainly has something in store for us <clears throat> and something that will be good and something that would help us. Well, this morning we talked about the famine of the Word of God. And uh, like I say, we hope and pray we'd have a lot more people come back tonight, but for whatever reason, they're not here. But I'm glad that you're here. And I want to pick up sort of where we were this morning. I'm going to try not to go back and go over anything that we talked about. But I did mention this, uh, that God expects his people to be spiritually full. We mentioned that we should be full of joy, and I mentioned the happiness that we should have uh, when we come into the Lord's house and uh, we enjoy the good things of God. And then God expects us not only to be full of joy, but he also feels, expects us to be full of the Spirit. You know, some of the denominations have scared the Baptist people to death about the Holy Ghost. I mean, the Pentecostal and the charismatic crowd They have scared the people to death about the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not going to lead you to do something that's not pleasing unto the Lord. He's not going to allow you to swing from the chandeliers. Those of you who don't know what chandeliers are, he's not going to allow you to swing from the light fixtures. But you know, we need to be filled with the Spirit. And can I say tonight, it's sad to say, but there's very few people today that are filled with the Spirit. You know why? We've got too much other junk inside. You know, it, it, it behooves me how that people will come to church and make vows and make boasts of what they're going to do and they'll lay things on the altar and they'll put them down here and they'll give them up. 
In two weeks, you're not even in church. You know what happened? They picked up that same old junk, doing the same old things. And, and, and I, told, I told a young man recently that came down, and, 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 and I'm going to be honest with you, he laid his cigarettes on this communion table, giving them up. He had been in church three or four weeks. You know what I told him? I said, if you lay them cigarettes down, you're going to put something, in, something that God has for you in your life to take the place of that so that you won't crave and desire them. But you know what happened? They starved themselves to death on the things that God's going to give and pick up those things that's killing them. I don't understand it. I'm afraid. I think sometimes that people, and please excuse the expression, that people play God as a fool sometimes. You're not fooling God. People aren't fooling God. He knows, the Bible says that he knows the thoughts and the intents of your heart. You don't have to do it for it to be sin. You can just think it in your mind and think it in your heart, and it's sin. And that's where we are today with our churches and people in our churches. The reason we're not growing is not the preacher's fault. It's not the program's fault. We don't have, it's not that we don't have the programs and we don't have the things that we need. It's not because we don't have a gymnasium to draw in the young people and all that kind of stuff. I'm telling you, if we give them Jesus, that's all they're going to need. That's all they need. Let these other things come. And that's what's happening. Some of these churches are trying to fill gaps and fill areas up in people's lives and, and, that, that, that don't mean nothing and they're leaving out Jesus. But the Bible expects us and he wants us to be filled with the Spirit. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18, and be not drunk with wine wherein it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Over in the book of Galatians chapter 5, let's turn there if you would please, right quick, and we'll read that portion of Scripture that you're familiar with in the book of Galatians that talks about the fruits of the Spirit. I'm turning with you, so chapter 5, I want you to notice if you would please, Verses 22 down through verse number 23 in Galatians chapter 5. The Bible says, But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. The fruits of the Spirit. And we that are filled with the Spirit, we should be bearing the fruits of the Spirit. If there's anything that people ought to see in our lives as Christians, and if we're feasting upon the things of God and we're feeding off of the word of God and there's not a famine in our life uh, concerning the time that we spend in the scriptures with the word of God, people ought to be able to see the love that's in our heart that Christ has for us and the love that we should have for others. But you know, some people today, some churches just seem like they go to fight instead of worship. Sad. I know a church not too far from here, uh, and I'm not going to call the name of the church, but I've never, I've never heard one good thing come out of the mouth of some of those church members about their church. It's always something bad, talking about the preacher, talking about the pastor, running him down. He don't know what he's doing. He's trying to take over. No, the problem is you want to take over. And I want to tell them that sometimes. You know, the problem is it's not the pastor, it's you. You're not subject to pastoral authority. And there is such a thing as pastoral authority. Amen? You're to reverence the man of God. You're the, hey, you're not to lead the man of God. You're to follow the man of God. If he's the right kind of leader, listen, you are to follow him. Hey, people today, they, I mean, they, they want to run the church. I said this morning, guess who's going to give an account of what goes on here? Amen. If I'm going to get the blame, <laughs> I, want to, I, want to, I want to be the one that people are, are, are respecting and honoring and following. And I'm going to try to be a good leader. The people today, they don't see that. They, don't, they haven't read the scriptures enough to know that the pastor is to be the one that's in charge and in authority. Now, I thank God for good men that, that we have at the church. We have deacons. We have trustees. I thank God for them. We got a good song leader. I appreciate that. We got good instrument players. We got good Sunday school teachers. Uh, we got people that are faithful in cleaning this church, and um, and it's a blessing. 
And, and it's a joy. And listen, the preacher can't do it all. But the preacher is to oversee it all. Amen. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I've seen some preachers that try to do it as a dictatorship. That won't work. That won't work. That's not the way it's supposed to be. The Bible says that we're not to lord ourselves over the God's heritage. But I believe we ought to, the people ought to respect the man of God and they ought to honor the man of God and they'll find that in the Bible and the word of God. And let me just say, being filled with the spirit of God will help us. Then the Bible tells us that we need to experience the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, 19 says, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Boy, if we could just get full of God, there'd be some things take place around here. Business would pick up if we'd get full of God. And like I say, in order to get full of God, we got to get some of that other stuff out because a lot of us don't have a whole lot more room for God in our lives. And that's because we're not giving ourselves the right nourishment and the, lot, and the right, uh, we're not partaking of the right meal, spiritually speaking, in order that we might grow and mature and nurture up and be strong in the things of God and in the, in the things of the Lord. So we see that God expects us to be full. He expects us to be full of wisdom. In Colossians chapter one and verse number nine, it says, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I believe if we as Christians should feast and feed upon the things of God and not suffer from famine and malnutrition of spiritual things, I think that we would be a lot wiser and have a lot more knowledge than we have now. I'm glad that some 50-something years that I've been saved that I've learned a few things. Now, I will say this. I do not know everything. I don't claim to know everything. Little William come up to me a while ago. He said, Pastor, can I ask you a question? I said, well, sure you can. He said, um, when I get 10 years old, how old are you now, William? Seven. Seven? So he's got a little ways to go. When I get 10 years old, I thought maybe he's going to ask me, can I teach a Sunday school class? Or <laughs> can I preach? Or can I lead the singing? Or, or something like that. And he said, I've already asked Brother Donnie. And I said, well, what do you want to ask me? He said, when I get 10 years old, can I know the code to your office door? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> I didn't know what he was going to ask me. I thought it was going to be some big, long theological question. That, you know what comes out of children today, you don't never know what they're going to ask. You don't ever know what they're going to say. And I was fixing to say, boy, I better brace myself because this is going to be something deep. <laughs> but can I have the code to your office door? I was able to answer that in pretty easy, amen. <laughs> but I appreciate William. And not building William up, but I wish we had about a dozen like him. Amen. Now I'm going to be greedy. I wish we had two dozen. <laughs> but you know, we got some young people coming along. Mom and dad, please try to instruct them right. And do right. And let them serve Jesus. You know, I, let them take part in the activities. You know, be careful how, be, be careful with what you punish your children with. You listening? You be careful how you punish your children and how you punish your grandchildren. If they want to do something for Jesus, you let them do it. They might have been mean as a snake all day. They might have not have done right. But if they want to do something for Jesus, don't you hinder them kids from doing something for Jesus because in the long run, I guarantee you, you will regret it. Amen. 
If you see them running into church, discipline and set them down, but let them go to their Sunday school class. Let them take part in what they're supposed to take part in. Let them sing in the youth choir. Let them take part in the class activities. Let them do, hey, let them give them a treat if they want to, as long as it's not physically hurting them. Let them give them a treat. Hey, just hey, be careful how you discipline your children. Ain't getting no amens. You say, well, preacher, I think I'm doing what's right. I'll tell you one thing. You don't limit, I don't care what age they are, you don't limit anybody from doing something for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, some of you may not like that, but I said a moment ago, I'm the shepherd and the bishop of your souls and also your children and your grandchildren. Well, I don't like that, preacher. I'm doing it to try to help you. I'm not doing it to hurt you. Because down the road, down the road, you'd say, boy, I think I did something wrong. And you know why? You, you, you know, a lot of times when we do things, we do things in ignorance. We do. I've done some things and you've done some things that we, we really didn't understand what we were doing and why we did it and, and, and we were wrong in doing it and so on and so forth and we've done it through ignorance. But listen, that's why we have the word of God. You know what the Bible says? Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. That's what Brother Mikey used a moment ago testifying to the fact how that Brother Mike and Sister Loretta brought the children up in church. And that's the way it ought to be. Train them up in the Lord. If they want to sing in the choir, let them sing in the choir. If they want to sing in the children's choir, let them sing in the children's choir. If they want to go to Sunday school, let them go to Sunday school. If they want to do something in the church, let them do it, amen. Just don't hinder them. Let's encourage them. Let's promote it. Y'all looking at me like a gap looking at a new gate. But it's still the truth. Trying to help you. You know, there's so many things in this book, and I said it this morning, if we just read this book. You wouldn't get near as mad as the preacher if you just read and say that God's already said it before the preacher ever said it. Well, let's take up an offer and go to the house. But you know why we can't do that? Because we cannot discern. We cannot discern what is the perfect will of God for our lives and for our family's life. And that's where that being filled with, uh, with a knowledge, spiritual knowledge, that's where that comes in at, being filled. Being able to discern what is right and what is wrong. Amen? And the only way we do that is by being full of the Spirit, being full of joy, and being full of God, and, and being full of the things that would help us to understand what the Word of God has to say. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8, and verse number 34, it says, Blessed is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gate, waiting at the, waiting at the post of my doors. Proverbs 15, 31. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. You know, it's all right as long as we're preaching about heaven and about going there. But when the preacher is preaching about being here on earth and getting ready for heaven, that's when we get mad at him. We get upset at him. Because of some of the things he says and some of the things and acts that he does. And the Bible says here that I just read to you, he says, the ear that heareth the reproof, the reproof, not the encouragement, not the, not the excitement, but the reproof, telling you when things are wrong and trying to instruct you in the right way. The Bible says, if you hear in reproof of life, abideth among the wise. The Bible also tells us that we need to handle our matters wisely. That's the Bible. Amen. Then Luke chapter 8, verse number 15, he says, but that, uh, but that on the good ground are they which are, they of which in an honest and good heart 
having heard the word, keep it and bring it forth fruit with patience. In other words, what you get fed with on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night, you ought to produce some good fruits with it. You ought to take in what the man of God is trying to give out and during the course of the week, you take that in your life and use it to serve the Lord and be a witness and honor for him and to bring him glory and realize and show people today that we need to be full of wisdom while we're in this life. James chapter one, verse number 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Sometimes it doesn't take much to push our buttons, does it? And the thing about it is sometimes some people know what buttons to push on us. But we have to be real careful. Because the Bible tells us wisdom is the fact that we watch and we're careful that we be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. We see that today because of the famine of the hearing of the word of God, there's so many other famines that are evident in people's lives today. I'm talking about Christian people. Now the sinner is out in the world lost and undone without Christ, but I'm talking about those of us that know what the word of God has to say. The Bible tells us in the book of Job 23, verse number 12, it says, neither have I gone back From the commandments of his lips, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Amen? Amen. We know and we realize how necessary that it is for us to eat physically. Like I said, had everybody in here this morning about half starved to death before we got out. Everybody's ready to eat. But let me just say, if we'd spent, hey, if we'd have spent just a little bit more time and feasted on some spiritual stuff, probably would have been better for us. Amen. And the lines wouldn't have been as long at the restaurant. But you see, the problem is today that we major on the minor. And we minor on the major. Job is saying here. It's more important that I get the spiritual food. It's more important that I get fed spiritually than it is that I have the necessary food in my life. And when you get full of God, that's what makes the difference. Can I say this morning as we begin to Look at a verse here in the book of Hosea chapter 10 in verse number 12. Uh, Notice what it has to say here. It says, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to speak, it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Now the word fallow there which says fallow ground, the word fallow means untilled, unoccupied, and neglected. Won't be too, too long before people will start working on their gardens. Spring will be coming. and Some have maybe even already started breaking up their ground and so on and so forth. I've never been too much of a gardener. Some of you are, and you would say to us this evening, if there's one thing about gardening, it requires a lot of work. It cannot go unoccupied, it cannot go untilled, it cannot be neglected. It has to be taken care of. You can have tomato vines this high and you can allow the weeds to come in and choke it off and not have any tomatoes. And you can have other, other things such as that that come in and we, if you don't take care of it, you don't keep the weeds out and you don't tend it and you don't till it and you don't uh, pay it some attention, we'll have things that will come in and take it over. If you don't treat it right and put the right pesticides or whatever you're supposed to put on, a little bugs to come in and eat all the stuff off and ruin all the plants and stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about. And that's the way it is as far as our life with Christ. If we fail not, 
If we fail to not put what we need in our life that will help us and strengthen us and guide us and direct us and us to be full of the things of God, our spiritual life will deteriorate if we leave it neglected. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 6, it said, Blessed are they which hunger and do uh, uh, hunger that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Basically, what this is saying, you can have all of God that you want. That's what it says. If we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we shall be filled. And that word filled there at the end of that verse just simply means that we should have abundance and we shall be satisfied. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the fact today that we can be satisfied in the things of God when we're filled with the things that we need, such as when we thirst after righteousness and we thirst after the good things of God and we want to be filled with God. There's a famine today, and because of that, there's a famine today among God's people of faithfulness. Used to be a time people would be faithful. Used to be a time, and let's say, let me say, I thank God for those of you that are faithful. As I said this morning, I believe that the Lord is holding back judgment upon the world because of the remnants in the world. But I thank God for the remnants that, of the people that are in our local churches today that are faithful. Those that are going to be in their place at the appointed hour when it's time to worship. When it's time to come in and sit down. But today we use every little excuse we can find to stay out of church. We stay out of doing what we can for. Do you realize when you're not in your place that somebody's looking at that seat where you sit in, they wonder where you are. They wonder, and listen, you're establishing a testimony just by being faithful, but today people aren't faithful and therefore some other people are starving because of the unfaithfulness of other people. How would you feel if I showed up about every other Sunday? You know, bless God, preacher, you're the preacher. You're supposed to be here. I'm not required to do any more than you are. I come because I want to. I don't come because I have to. <laughs> Somebody said, well, we have to go to church. No, we get to go to church. Hey, man, we get to go to church. We don't have to go. We get to go. I count it a joy and I count it a privilege. It's amazing to me how people can do everything else except come to church. When I worked on a public job, I, hey, when I worked on a public job, sometimes I went to work when I was sick. I didn't feel like going to work, but I went to work. And there's been times I didn't feel like coming to church. I didn't feel good. Didn't feel well. I don't come when I had a fever. I don't want to spread anything, give anybody anything. I understand that. But listen, just because your toenail is out of whack, don't worry about staying out of church. Them little aches and pains you got, hey, you're going to have them if you stay at the house. They're still going to hurt. Might as well come on, enjoy the things of God, be at the house of God, and just be faithful. I guarantee you'll feel a whole lot better once you get here. People don't like what you're saying tonight, but listen, it's the truth, folks. You see, the fact of the matter is this, that you're not going to have to stand before this preacher and get an account of your faithfulness, but you're going to stand before God and give an account of your faithfulness. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to keep you out of trouble with God. And you don't want to get in trouble with him. Brother Robert told me back there a while ago, I moved around a lot this morning and up and down and everything. He says, a lot of them people on the internet and YouTube, and they go back and see it, they're going to see a lot of scenes in there where the preacher don't have no head. <laughs> Can't keep up with me with the, with the, with the camera back there. Well, they said would like to chop my head off. So they may say, hey, it finally happened. <laughs> well, folks, we just need to get full of God. And you know what? And none of these things would offend you if you were full of God. We just, 
we, we just want what the best that God has for you. We want you to enjoy the best. The famine of unfaithfulness. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 2, it says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And that includes the women also too, by the way. I don't have time to get down to it because I know it's all way down into other parts of my notes. But concerning his service, there's a famine today in the service of God. People don't want to get involved. People don't want to serve. Teachers that are capable don't want to teach. Preachers that are preachers sometimes don't want to preach. Now, when I go to the fellowship meeting tomorrow, I don't go to preach. In fact, I'm going hoping that they ask somebody else. I, I want to hear somebody else preach. I enjoy that. Now, if they call on me to preach, I'll try to bring a little something, try to be a help to them. And, and, and they do call on me some. And, uh, but I, I, I go to hear those other guys preach. And I know they're going and feeling the same way because they do all the preaching, never get preached to. But I enjoy that. And that's a blessing. But we think about the service. But let me just say, I heard, I don't remember who it was. It might have been Dr. Logan uh, the other day was preaching on this or mentioned this. Little things. Little things. You think about the little things that has to be done in the ministry of a church in order for that ministry to be successful. Everybody's not going to be preachers. Everybody's not going to be teachers. Everybody's not going to sing in the choir, but I will say this. I believe there's people sitting out there that should be in the choir. And if you're not, you're starving yourself to death because you can be used as an instrument and a vessel Amen. for God's glory. And we think sometimes some of the things that we got to do don't amount to a whole lot. But the little things mean a whole lot. Amen. We just stop and think a lot of times some of the things that people do and people think, well, it's not a big responsibility, it's not a big job, but listen, somebody's got to do it. Could you imagine, could you imagine if nobody cleaned the restrooms for about two months, can you imagine what it would be like going into one of our restrooms? And we take it for granted. Somebody did it. Yep, it was a little thing. But it had to be done. Thank God for our ladies. And some of our men that come out and help clean the church, clean the bathrooms, clean the commodes, mop the floors, vacuum the church. I mean, sometimes you, you look like a tornado went through here sometimes after service. Papers all over the floor and so on and so forth. Kids throwing them in. Mom and dad sitting right beside them letting them do it. Stuff in papers in the back where the little pencils and the tithing envelopes go and all that kind of stuff. You know what? You know what? See, somebody's got to dig them out. That's a little thing. And the sad part about it, when we're digging them out, I don't know why the kids do this. We're just a grabbing and a grumbling and a complaining the whole time we're fixing it and taking care of it. But that's a little thing. Somebody's got to do it. Why don't, why don't you just say, God, let me do some of the little things. I believe when we get full of God, we'll be wanting to do not a, not a few little things, but we'll, we'll want to do a lot of things. We don't have to be the top men on the totem pole. Guess what? Those that's underneath is one that's holding up the totem pole. Amen? And I said, I said a moment ago, I thank God for the people we have and the men we have and the people we have that God's blessed us with, with good, a good group of church members that are supportive and, and will work. And so, but I'm just still saying, even that the very best we are, we need to be full of God. And the only way you can get full of him 
The psalmist David says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good. The more that we partake of him, the more we'll want of him. The more that we feast upon him, I believe the more we'll desire him. Amen? You know, people are still talking about the fish fry that the church had here. And thank God for the men, the good job that they did. And even though I wasn't able to go, I hear, and we're going to the fellowship meeting tomorrow, and I know they're going to be talking about that fish fry. They're going to be bragging about it and all that. You know why? Because it was good. They enjoyed it. They feasted. They got full. But we just get full of God when we come. Leave full. Leave excited. Leave happy. Leave rejoicing. Leave serving. Leave praising. Leave doing what's pleasing and honorable unto him. Let's stand with our head bowed and our eyes closed. Ms. Linda's going to come and play for us. If you need to come tonight for any reason, you just slip out and make your way down to the, the altar. Let the God work in your heart, work in your life. Get what you need tonight. Just turn it over to him. Let God take care of it. Is there one here tonight to say, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure that I'm saved, Preacher. I'm, I, if I was to die right now, I'm not sure that I'd go to heaven. I look around tonight and I know most of the folk in here have made professions of faith, but there's still a chance and a possibility that the devil has slipped somebody a curve. The devil has deceived them in some way. And you're here tonight and you say, Preacher, I'm just not sure that I'm saved. Would you raise your hand and say, Pray for me, Preacher, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven if I die. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to point you out. I'm not going to come to you. But we'll pray for you. Pray for me, Preacher. Is there a Christian here tonight? Just say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I know I'm on my way to heaven. But I have to be honest tonight, Pastor. The Lord knows my heart. He knows what's going on in my life. But I'm not as full of God as I ought to be and should be and I want to be. You might want to lift your hand tonight and say, pray for me, preacher, that I'd fill my life with the things of God. I'd fill myself up on Him. If you have a desire for that tonight, would you just slip your hand up and say, pray for me, preacher. God bless you and God bless you. Hands up all over the building. That we'll be just what God wants us to be and be full of him. Christian, tonight if you have a problem, a burden, something going on, a trouble, if you need to come to the altar tonight and pray and somebody to pray with you, you slip out and come. And bring it before the Lord. Don't leave tonight unless you have things settled with him. One anywhere. Well, I appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you for coming. Appreciate the day we've had. We've had a good day in the Lord's house. I've enjoyed preaching. I've enjoyed the music. Enjoyed the fellowship and enjoyed the good sweet spirit of the Holy Ghost of God. Just fill up on God this week. Go home tonight, this week, read your Bible. Memorize a verse or two. And plant the word of God in your heart. And there'll be times that'll come in your life that you'll be glad you did. Live right, serve right, do right. And honor the Lord Jesus with your life. Let's bow our heads and we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. You'll be safe going home. Don't forget Wednesday night, uh, 7 o'clock, of course. Don't forget if you want to eat on Wednesday night, put your name down. I think this Wednesday they're having hamburgers, fries, baked beans, and coleslaw. So that's what's on the menu, of course, dessert. So be sure to put your name down if you'd like to come and eat on Wednesday night, okay? All right, let's bow our heads and we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Brother uh, Robert Thomas, if you would please, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer?